Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with the CTV News Update. 60 people have succumbed to COVID-19 in Maryland over the last 24 hours. That brings the death toll statewide to nearly 2,000. In Prince George's County, 424 people have died from the virus. Well, the state of Maryland puts the EPA on notice and forced Chesapeake Bay pollution standards or face a lawsuit. Attorney General Brian Frost says the EPA has failed to force Pennsylvania and New York to live up to 2035 2025 goals to restore the bay. She was a trailblazer and an activist. She was a public servant and a role model to many. Odessa Shannon, the first African-American woman elected to the Montgomery County School Board has died. Shannon died over the weekend at the age of 91. Not everybody was prejudiced. Today, not everybody is prejudiced, no. In fact, I think all of our hope right now is on the younger generation. I, I really believe that sincerely. And, um, and I hope that you all will pick up the mantle of human rights and civil rights and, and run with it. Shannon also served as executive director of the Montgomery County Human Relations Commission. Well, Hyattsville businesses and residents are now eligible for COVID-19 grants. Keisha Butts is standing by with that story. The city of Hyattsville established the COVID-19 pandemic relief fund through partnerships with several nonprofits. $500,000 will go to residents, including undocumented immigrants and hourly workers. Another $500,000 will go to businesses, including child care centers and working artists. Mayor Candace Hollingsworth says she hopes this fund will help the community. She says she's received calls from businesses and residents who've had a hard time during this pandemic. We know that what we're doing is not going to be the the solve for everyone's issue, but what it is is a way for us to contribute in the ways that we can um, in hopes that it's it helps move the needle somewhat for those that are in need. Residents and businesses will have to apply for this fund. For more information, visit Hyattsville.org. Back to you. Looking for ways to help your community? Caregivers. Services is looking for volunteers. Katia Jones has that story. In an effort to better support Maryland seniors impacted by COVID-19, Governor Larry Hogan launches the Caregiver Services Corps. The program will send volunteers to the homes of seniors who need help with tasks like a daily hygiene, picking up groceries and medications, and meal prep. The volunteers will fill in temporarily for the normal caregiver because of that person has become exposed or ill with the coronavirus. If you are a senior and need assistance, contact the Help Center at 211. For more information, visit mdr.health.maryland.gov. This is Katera Jones with CTV News. And you may have heard of killer bees. What about killer hornets? Patricia Vallone has that story. That's right. You may have heard about them on social media, the so-called killer hornets. Are they harmless or could they further decimate our vulnerable bee population now that they've been located here in the U.S.? University of Maryland entomologist Mike Ralph says there's reason to be concerned. It's kind of a double threat, Patty. Number one, this will be a threat to average human beings. Uh, we know back in Asia and China there have been reports of this particular wasp actually killing people. And this is beyond kind of the allergic, severe allergic reaction we call anaphylaxis. This has a very potent venom. It has a very large volume of venom. And they found if people sustain multiple stings by many hornets, it can actually be lethal. And this is over and above that anaphylactic type response. It will actually hunt the honeybees create a massive attack on a honeybee hive, kill all the defenders of that hive, and then after they've killed defender, the defenders, they will occupy that hive and remove all the bee brood. And the hornet stinger is long enough to puncture a beekeeping suit, and the potent venom can lead to excruciating pain. Now, just to be clear, these hornets look nothing like native honeybees, which we need to pollinate our crops. 
Thank you, Patty. Well, congratulations to George and Ernestine Barksdale. The Council of Government has named the couple Foster Parents of the Year for Prince George's County. I had two children. I always wanted more since I had a house with extra rooms and nobody here but me and George. I decided to share my home. If I didn't have this to do, then I would just be dull and old around the house. As the kids came and you got the joy of watching them get settled and just come natural after that. COG is honoring foster parents throughout the metro area. We're talking college basketball. The PGCC Owls have had two successful seasons back to back, and because of that, players are gaining notice. This year, four guys from the NJCAA team are moving on to play NCAA basketball. I'm excited to um, start a new journey. I'm excited to go there and see what they got for me down there. And I choose there because it seemed like it was the right, the right choice, like a brotherhood. They seem like they hands on with the team, with the, with the teammates, like they help each other out. And they, and they actually get good grades and um, get the bachelor's degree. That's why I choose there. Uh, what are you hoping to bring to that program next season? I'm hoping to bring the same thing I brought to PG, you know, like fast-paced basketball, fast-paced up and down. And I just want to, like, fit in and um, impact immediately. What brought my decision was uh, I was used to the HBCU environment, so it only felt right to go back to an HBCU. I hope to bring, you know, the same energy I brought to PG, uh, the same leadership I brought, you know, bring some energy and hopefully, you know, bring a championship when I get there. I picked Claflin because it's like getting away from the, from home and experiencing different things. Uh, it's going to give me a better experience of how me being on my own would be. What are you hoping to bring to the team next year when you go to play? Uh, I hope to bring playmaking, defense and scoring and leadership. Just, um, it was a family decision. I felt like it was the best move for me personally and helped me grow for basketball and academics. Where are you hoping to bring Tulane next year with your skill set coming from PGCC? Well, I play above the rim, so just like an athletic skill set, play above the rim basically and uh, good defense. So that's what I hope to bring Tulane. That's what Juco is supposed to be about. Um, the wins and losses, the wins and losses are trivial. They are personal for coaches, but guys come to JUCO to move on to NCAA, not to help coaches win games. So when our guys get to us and, you know, they start getting scholarship offers and they start, you know, accepting scholarship offers. Like I think soon they end up before he committed, I think he was up to like six, seven offers and same thing with Isaiah. And, you know, that's what it's about. Seeing the looks on their faces when they're talking to college coaches, Hearing them say, you know, we're looking to offer this guy. We want to offer this guy free, a free education. And that is your CTV Sports Report. And that's your CTV News Update. I'm Byron Scott. For the latest information on COVID-19 in Maryland, visit the State Health Department website. That's health.maryland.gov. Again, health.maryland.gov. Click the link to the COVID-19 information portal. There you'll find all the latest information about coronavirus. You'll find daily updates on cases and fatalities. Answers to questions about testing and the governor's stay-at-home order are available as well. For specific information about Prince George's, visit PrinceGeorge'sCountyMD.gov. That's PrinceGeorge'sCountyMD.gov. The site offers information about local services for residents and businesses. There's a link for COVID-19 relief donations. Also, food pantry locations are listed. And if you have any questions, call the county COVID-19 hotline at 301-883-6627. That's 301-883-6627.